doesn't look straight. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the picture. No, it's not the picture. What's this? There's something wrong with the, the thing. Anyway, uh, welcome everybody. When you come in, just say hello. Let me know that you're there. And we'll get started soon. Oh, that late. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm just getting my paper with sorted. Sometimes I can't read my writing, eh? <sighs> okay, I'll start in a couple of minutes, so just wait for a few people to come in. How are you today, people? Come in and say hello. Have you got your manuals? This is the manual that we follow the studies here. All our lessons come from here. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'll wait another minute for people to come in. But in the meantime, let's just listen to some music. Let's see, where's my remote? Sorry that I'm a bit late. Hey. Hi, love. How are you? Are you going to seminary? Are you still at seminary? I miss seminary. How are you doing? Good to see you on here. Okay, well, you know, I've been um, doing this group for about a couple of months now and just helping people understand these scriptures more just by fluke it just happened so yeah there's people on here that are youth i know i've got some of my past students is, you know watching so this group is for anybody any age group hey <sighs> okay i'm gonna start soon how are you doing anyway you you know what you guys been up to and um Two. I'll start in a minute. I'll give people a minute to come in. Um, and then we're just going to get started. I gra you graduated last year? No. What the heck? You're growing up too fast, mate. So, are you still in youth? You're still in youth? Oh my gosh. Where's the time gone? How did you grow up so fast? Ah, well, that's good to hear you graduated, though. Awesome. Good on you. How was your graduation? I miss him, Mary. I miss teaching. So, anyway, I don't teach anymore, so I come on here and I teach the people. Thank you. Good day. Maybe I'll bring you on as a guest one day. When well, your last year in youth. Are you excited? Um, like, are you ready to leave the youth? <laughs> Come away, see? That is crazy. How'd you grow up so fast? Oh, wow. I don't know if it's the weather's the same here. Yeah, look at our weather. It's our weather. There. There's 
a bit of sun, but it's been raining all morning. What's it like out your father's side? So, because you graduated seminary, are you still studying your scriptures or <laughs> are you still doing your opening up your scriptures and reading them in the morning or are you finding time to have a look at them? And of all books, which, which was your, your favourite? Book of Mormon is always my favourite. Um, but yeah, good on you for graduating. So that, that means it's just your brother. Just your brother at seminary? Yeah. Anyway, I've been doing a bit of study. And I was meant to come on at one o'clock. But um, yeah, I had things to do. I had things to do. What are you up to today? And where's mum? Is mum there? Anyway, it's good to see you here. Thank you for coming in and joining us. Uh, and you can pop out any time that you want to if you get busy or anything. Um, right, so we are going to, uh, before I go into the lesson and stuff today, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, first of all is your... Hang on, I'll turn this down a bit, it's too hard. Alright, just to welcome those new members that are in the page. I, I know a few added themselves to the page this morning. Oh, and I think through the past week we've had a few people come on board. So just welcome to those who, are, um, who have joined us. And this page, I just have to kind of like remind everybody that this page is uh, just a page about... Um, well, I kind of like make it easier for people to get their scriptures and just by listening and I mean you can count that as reading. If you're a bit busy and you don't find the time or you don't understand or it's not that um, interesting for you to read, then that's why I created this page so I can, at least you're going to get your scripture study in for the day. Because we, I mean we've been encouraged for years to keep doing our you know, reading our scriptures. So I'm just putting those here to make things easier for others to get it in. And I know there's, there's a lot of people who don't understand these scriptures at all, and I'm still learning. Um, and I think if you do have trouble with understanding it, it's good for us to, to talk about it. And how, let me just check these messages while I'm talking. Oh, too late. Um, so I come on and do these daily lives to just make things easier for people to follow their come follow me study um and to just like man i tell you it's never a waste of time when you open up your scriptures and read it's you always get something you always gain something amazing from doing that i can assure you you always learn something doesn't matter how many years you've been studying scriptures doesn't matter how many times you read the same chapters it doesn't matter you will still learn something new from it okay there's no end to the learning um, so come with your learning eyes and your learning ears and prepare yourself to, to learn something, okay? It's not about me, it's about you. Um, and whatever you want to take from this uh, experience, then, yeah, it's up to you. All right, just another thing is, um, yeah, when I... I know that there's a few people going who are following on the page and who, who don't say anything. And I understand that, that. That's fine. Just come in and watch. Um, but also, like yesterday, I talked about the needs of people, individuals. If you, you know, when I read on the live, it caters for everybody, like as a group. But if there's something that you need help with personally, then I suggest you come forward and ask, you know. Um, like you need help uh, trying to understand words, um, you need help with reading. I had a student that couldn't read properly, so he was like behind the, the everyone else in the class. So, I mean, um, if you have problems like this, then, you know, just come forward and ask for help and I can, you know, do my best to help you. So we're all at different levels of understanding, so I'm catering for that, okay? But if you really want to um, kind of like get personal help, then you have to come forward and ask for it, okay? Um, uh, another thing? Nah, that's enough. 
I, I'll just go into a couple of other things. Uh, nah, yep, yeah, okay. No, we'll just go into our, our reading. Okay, I, I, so, it, what happens, what normally happens, those who follow, I share things either at the beginning of our reading or at the end of our reading. So, I'm, I'm choosing, I did have something to say in the beginning, but I think I want to leave it to the end because it, it goes in well with the lesson. So, let's just go with the flow, okay? Um, but before we start, we always have prayer. So, I will turn everything down and I will get to um, start our reading. I've got lots of experiences I want to talk about too as we go through the reading and afterwards. So try and, you know, hang in there. <laughs> the reading's a bit too long and that's okay. It's just, you know, you'll find something worth listening in it. Okay, I'll say the prayer. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank thee for this wonderful time that we have to come together and give thanks and gratitude unto thee for all our blessings and we're grateful for this time that we have to learn. Help us to invite thy spirit to be here with us, to teach us and to help us and to share and to feel comfortable to um, converse with one another and to share one another's thoughts and impressions and ideas and testimonies. We pray, Father, that thy spirit may help us to... Um, love one another and serve each other and we're grateful father for this opportunity with the technology that we have and we're grateful for these blessings and we pray for those who are in need and less fortunate than us and we're grateful for these blessings and these things we pray in jesus name amen 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 okay all right let me see um Okay, I'll go on to the lesson. If you if you want me to stop and just talk about things, then just tell me. Um, if there's something that you want to discuss, then I'm all good for that. Just You just have to tell me, okay? So, where do we start? Let's start. We, we, so, this whole week, we are doing Helaman chapter 13 to 16. And the topic is glad tidings of great joy. I, I, so, I... I guess that's what the whole chapter is about. Finding glad tidings of great joy. And I think, you know, what can bring us this great joy. Okay, so the tip for today is build upon what you have already learned in the scriptures. So we have been going for about, mm, it's going on to four months, I reckon. Four months. Um, and each time you, you come in and listen to the live, you will learn something new. And so what the invitation, um, this tip is... And, you know giving us is whatever you learn each day build upon what you learn like for example if today um, I'm listening in then tomorrow add something to that like listen and then maybe come in and ask a question or come in and share a thought or come in and share a memory, or come in and share your testimony. I don't know, whatever it is, but build upon what you learn each each time you come in and watch the live. Okay, and that, that leads to the progress that you're looking for. Because um, doing that is better than doing nothing. Yeah? Because you can come in here and listen to me, and that's fine. That, that No worries about that. But... Um, Doing something after it, it kind of like reiterates what you just learned. And it puts it in motion and it puts it into application in your own personal life. And from that comes the strength of your testimony. And from that comes increase in faith. And from that comes strength. Okay? So, um, let us go to the lesson. We'll go to the lesson manual. Those people who don't know what this lesson manual is. This is what we follow worldwide, okay? Follow along. Um, but if you just want to be simple and just listen in, then that, that's fine, okay? So I'm just going to read this. This is kind of like an introduction to the chapter. So page 138 in the manual, it says, 
The first time Samuel the Lamanite tried to share glad tidings in Zarahemla, he was rejected and cast out by hard-hearted Nephites. You might say it was as if they built an impenetrable inner impenetrable wall around their hearts that prevented them from receiving Samuel's message. Um, pause there for a second. So these people that we're going to read about in this story are people who have already built a wall around their, around their heart. Um, and they've made it so hard that nothing can get in. Um, so you can kind of like imagine what kind of people we're going to be um, learning from today. People who are hard-hearted, people who don't want to learn, people who, don't want, who think they already know everything and they don't want to know more. And they don't want people telling them what to do. Okay, so these are, these are who we're dealing with today. And we do see people like that. We do see people like that. We, I'm, I'm sure we see people like this today who do not want to hear, who do not, not want to know. And some of these people can be as simple as like our friends, can be people in our, our families and so forth, okay? So let me carry on. Samuel understood the importance of the message he bore and demonstrated faith by following God's commandment that he should return again and prophesy. So in the story, you'll, you'll hear all about it in the story. He goes away and comes back, all right? And he teaches the people, even though it was kind of like difficult to teach these people. So just as Samuel did, we all encounter wars as we, quote, prepare the way of the Lord, close quote, and strive to follow his prophets. And like Samuel, we too bear witness of Jesus Christ. So we all are Samuel at some stage in our lives. We, um, if we are followers of Christ, we all share, um, bear witness to Jesus Christ. Um, so we learn from his example as well. Um, who surely shall come and invite all to believe in his name. This is quite important. Not everyone will listen and some may actively oppose, but those who believe in this message with faith in Christ find that it truly is, quote, glad tidings of great joy, close quote. Okay, so I think we're gonna, I don't know, somehow find joy. Um, yeah, but let's read, let's get into the reading so we can find out more. Uh, what have we got here? I'll come back to the questions, but what it wants us to do, the lesson wants us to do is pay attention to Helaman 30 verses 13, oh sorry, Helaman chapter 13 verses 3 and 4, and I'll stop as we come to those verses, okay? Um, what does it want us to do? Hmm. Okay, it's just asking what in, what what ex, what inspires us about Philemon thirteen three and four. Anyway, let's go to the scriptures because that's where it's at. Okay, there's a bit to read today, so just bear with us. Um, and if there's any verses that you would like to, if you're following along, just tell me what verses that you know what verses you really love, and that's. When you come into the replay too, just, just make a note of what verses you, you really like, okay? Uh, can I just pause you for a second? All right, we're back. Let's start reading. Okay. Uh, the prophecy of Samuel, the Lamanite to the Nephites. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Chapter 13. Samuel the Lamanite prophesies the destruction of the Nephites. So he actually does prophesy what's going to happen to them. And he is giving them, he's giving them a warning before it actually happens. Um, but let's see what they think about his warning. Unless they repent. So he's going to warn them, unless they repent, the destruction will come. They and their riches are cursed. They reject and stone the prophets are encircled about by demons, I, I want to pause at that area, and seek for happiness in doing iniquity, about 6 BC. All right, and now it came to pass that in the 18th and 6th year, the Nephites did still remain in wickedness, yea, in great wickedness, while the Lamanites did observe, look, listen to these people, 
For the Lamanites did observe strictly to keep the commandments of God according to the law of Moses. Mm. So it seems like the Nephites have gone a bit wayward and the Lamanites are just a little bit uh, more obedient. I don't like it that that thing is crooked. Hang on, let me turn you around a bit. There we go, that's a little bit better. Anyway, okay. And it came to pass that in this year there was one Samuel, a Lamanite, came into the land of Zarahemla and began to preach unto the people. And it came to pass that he did preach many things, repentance unto the people, and they did cast him out. And he was about to return to his own land. Verse 3. So here is where the gold is. Verse 3 and 4. But behold, the voice of the Lord came unto him, that he should return again and prophesy unto the people whatsoever things should come into his heart. Verse 4. And it came to pass that they would not suffer that he should enter into the city. Therefore he went and got up, got upon the wall thereof, which explains that picture that is in the profile of, our, of this page. So he gets up on the wall thereof, stretched forth his hands, and cried with an loud voice, and prophesied unto the people, whatsoever things the Lord put into his heart. So he's saying everything that comes from his heart, which is a beautiful thing. Um, and we will come back to talking more about that later on, okay? Um, verse 5, And he said unto them, Behold, I, Samuel, a Lamanite, do speak the words of the Lord, which he doth put into my heart. Love it. And behold, he hath put into my heart, once again, to say unto this people that the sword of justice hangeth, sword of justice hangeth over this people, and four hundred years pass not away, save the sword of justice falleth upon the people. Um, verse 6. So he's prophesying their destruction, just like what the chapter heading said. Yea, heavy destruction awaiteth. If someone came and said to you, you your family are going to be destroyed, um, how would you respond? Would you respond like, oh, okay, what do I need to do? Will you take you to that warning? Or will you be like these people who have already built a wall around their heart and in their ears too? I think there's nothing in their ears too. They refuse to listen. Okay, so this people... Now let me see what's the last word. Destruction awaiteth this, this, this people, and it surely cometh unto this people, and nothing can save this people, save it be repentance and faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, who surely shall come into the world and shall suffer many things and shall be slain for his people. Verse 7. And behold, an angel of the Lord hath declared it unto me, and he did bring glad tidings to my soul. Yes. And behold, I was sent unto you to declare it unto you also that ye might have glad tidings. But behold, ye would not receive me. So they, they're supposed to feel joy from, you know, uh, from Samuel sharing this warning. You, you would think that they would feel joy. If someone came and warned you about the destruction of your family, you, you would think, um, well, I would think gratitude, eh? I think to be grateful, I wouldn't want to think, you know, just go away and think they'd be silly. I think that they would come with the right intention to help my family. Well, that's the way I see it anyway. But these people have told them to go away. And if they were more obedient, they would feel that, you know, the glad tidings of great joy. They would. But they, they choose not to. They don't want to. Uh, this. Verse 8, therefore, so as I'm reading, do you anything, does anything trigger your mind? Is like, do you, can you see yourself in these things that we're, we're talking about? Uh, verse 8, therefore, thus saith the Lord, because of the hardness of the hearts of the people of Nephites, of the Nephites, except they repent, I will take away my word from them, and I will withdraw my spirit from them, and I will suffer them no, no, suffer them no longer, and I, I will turn the heart of the brethren their brethren against them. Verse 9 And 400 years shall not pass away before I cause that they shall be smitten. Yea, I will visit them with the sword and with famine and with pestilence. See? That's what happens with no ears. 
Verse 10, Yea, I will visit them in my fierce anger, and there shall be, there shall be those of the fourth generation who shall live of your enemies hmm. to behold your utter destruction and this shall surely be uh, surely come except you repent saith the lord and those of the fourth generation shall visit your dis destruction that's the warning verse 11 but if you will repent and return unto the lord your god i will turn away mine anger saith the lord yea thus saith the lord blessed are they who will repent and turn unto me but woe unto him that repenteth not verse 12 yea woe unto this great city of zarahemla for behold it is because of those who are righteous that it is that it is saved yea woe unto this great city for i perceive saith the lord that there are many yea even the more part of this great city that will harden their hearts against me saith the lord so he already knows he's, he already knows he's just giving them a warning Verse 13, but they're already true to their own colors and they choose to be this way. Yeah, they choose to be that way. Um, but behold, it is for the righteous sake that it is spared. But behold, the time cometh, saith the Lord, that when you shall cast out the righteous from among you, then shall, then shall ye be ripe for destruction. Yea, woe be unto this great city because of the wickedness and abominations which are in her. Verse 15. See, I mean, you love your stuff, right? <sighs> Sometimes you love your stuff and you're just blinded by it all. You cannot hear anything else. And you've already forgotten the Lord, so you've already decided your consequence, really. Verse 15. Yea, and woe be unto the city of Gideon, for the wickedness and abominations which are in her. Verse 16. Yea. And woe be unto all the cities which are in the land, round about, which are possessed by the Nephites, because of the wickedness and abominations which are in them. 17. And behold, a curse shall come upon the land, saith the Lord of hosts, because of the people's sake who are upon the land, yea, because of their wickedness and their abominations. 18. And it came to pass, that, it came to pass saith the Lord of hosts, yea, our great and true God, that whoso shall hide up treasures in the earth shall find them again no more because of the great curse of the land, save he be a righteous man and shall hide it up unto the Lord. Ooh, and the next few verses talk about a lot about hiding those treasures. Verse 19, For I will, saith the Lord, that they shall hide up their treasures unto me. And cursed be they who hide not up their treasures unto me. For none hideth up their treasures unto me, save it be the righteous. And he that hideth not up his treasures unto me, cursed is he. And also the treasure, and none shall redeem it because of the curse of the land. There's a lot of hiding treasure in that those verses. Uh, verse 20. And the day shall come that they shall hide up their treasures because they have set their hearts upon riches. And because they have set their hearts upon their riches and will hide up their treasures when they shall flee before their enemies because they will not hide them up unto me. Cursed be they and also their treasures and in the day shall be smitten, said the Lord. So all those verses kind of like tell me that... Um, we love our treasures so much that we don't want to share them. <laughs> and we choose not to share them with the Lord especially. So these treasures may not be um, treasures like in the old days. These are things, just precious things um, that we're not willing to share um, with the Lord. Verse 21, Behold ye, the people of this great city, and hearken my, unto my words, which the Lord saith, for behold, he said that ye are cursed because of your riches, and also of your riches cursed, because ye have set your hearts upon them, and have not hearkened unto the words of him who gave them unto you. Verse 22, ye do not remember the Lord your God in the things which ye have had. He hath blessed you, but ye do always remember your riches. Ye do always remember your riches, not to thank the Lord your God for them, Yea, your hearts are drawn out unto the Lord, but they do swell with great pride unto boasting. 
and unto great swelling, envyings, strifes, malice, persecutions, and murders, and all manner of iniquities. All those things we do. Well, they did it in their day, and we do it today. Surely we do. Great pride unto boasting, and unto great swelling. You know, swelling of your head. <laughs> Envies, strifes, malice, persecutions, and murders. Yes, we do that. We, we are known to do it. Verse 23. For this cause hath the Lord... Oh, excuse me. For this cause... That the Lord God caused that the curse should come upon the land and also upon your riches, and this because of your iniquities. 24. Yea, woe well unto this people because of this time which has arrived, that ye do cast out your prophets and do, mock, and do mock them and cast stones at them and do slay them and do all manner of iniquity unto them, even as they did for, even as they did of old time. Yes. Verse 25, and now, when you talk, you say, If our days had been in the days of our fathers of old, we would not have slain the prophets, we would not have stoned them and cast them out. Hypocrites, eh? <laughs> um, verse 26, Behold, ye are worse than they, for as the Lord liveth, as a, if a prophet come among you and declareth unto you the word of the Lord, which testifieth of your sins and iniquities, ye are angry with him, and cast him out and seek all manner of ways to destroy him. Yea, you will say that he is a false prophet, and that he is a sinner and a devil, because of he, because he testifieth that your deeds are evil. Um, pause there for a second. I think so. This is when the prophet tells you that what you know what you're doing is wrong. I think that's anyone in general too. Sometimes I think. When anyone tells us that we're doing wrong, we don't want to hear it. If we're humble, we will take it. But if we're not humble, if we're prideful and stuck in our old ways, we will stay there forever if we don't take the take heed to the counsel um, of those who really just want to help us. Yeah. Verse 27. Behold, if a man, man should come, come among you and shall say, Do this, and there is no iniquity. Do that, and you shall not suffer, yea. He will say, Walk after the pride of your own hearts. Yea, walk after the pride of your eyes, and do whatsoever your heart desireth. And if a man shall come among you and say this, you will receive him, and say that he is a prophet. Oh, my gosh. That's so true. It's like if someone comes to you and tells you, Okay, carry on and do that. Whatever you're doing is fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with it keep doing it, then you will call him a prophet and you, you'll believe him more than, than someone who's actually trying to tell you the right thing to do. Sometimes it's hard to hear someone um, chastise you, um, but when it's a prophet, man, he's a man of God. When he speaks, you know, the Lord is speaking to you. Directly to you. Verse 28. I mean, I'll take his counsel any day. Verse 28, and you will know whether it's true because, you know, when you hear truth, you know it is true. Verse 28, yea, and especially if it's from the heart, I, I do recognize that now. When you speak from the heart, you always know that it is a place of truth. There's no denying that. When someone speaks from their heart, it is a place of truth. And they're just sharing their own truth, yeah? Verse 28, yea, you will lift him up. And you will give unto him your substance, you will give unto him your gold and your silver, and you will clothe him with costly apparel. And because he speaketh flattering words unto you, and he say unto you, All this is well, and then you will not find fault with him. That is so true, so, so true. You know, when someone is um, coming to you with flattering words and saying, Oh, don't worry about that. You know, you don't have to do that kind of thing anymore. Just do what you want. You won't find any fault with him. Even though you know what you're doing is wrong, um, and this person comes along and says that what you're doing is okay, you still believe him rather than the prophet or someone you know who is telling the truth. 
29. Oh, ye wicked and perverse generation, ye hardened and ye stiff naked people, yes. How long will you, will you suppose that the Lord will suffer you? Yeah, how long will you suffer yourselves to be led foolish and blind? By led, um, led by foolish and blind guides. Yeah, how long will you choose darkness rather than light? That's so true. I see people today actually, uh, you know, trying to overcome the, the things that they do that they are not proud of, that they don't like doing, but they still go back into it. You know? Foolish guides, they allow foolish guides to lead them astray. Um, I don't know, but, you know, I, I kind of like to think that you, because of the easiness of way, you know, it's just easier. Who wants to do anything hard? When you don't want to do it, you don't want to do it. So you choose the easiness of way. Verse 30. Yea, behold, the anger of the Lord is already kindled against you. Behold, he hath cursed the land because of your iniquity. Verse 31. And behold, the time cometh that curses your riches, that they become slippery, that ye cannot hold them. And in the days of your poverty, ye can retain not. Ye cannot retain them. 32. And in the days of your poverty, ye shall cry unto the Lord. And in vain shall ye cry, for your desolation is already come upon you, and your destruction is made sure. And then shall ye weep and howl in that day, saith the Lord of hosts. And then shall ye lament and say, Verse 33, oh, that I have repented. And this is where you would kind of like regret all the dumb stuff that you do. Oh, that I have repented and had not killed the prophets and stoned them and cast them out. Yea, and that day you shall say, oh, that we have remembered the Lord our God in the day that he gave us our riches. And then they would not have become slippery that we should lose them. For behold, our riches are gone from us. Oh, <laughs> the tragedy of that happening, eh? Just losing all those things, just slipping from your fingers and they are gone forever. Verse 34, see, it's not until then do you really learn your lesson. Why you got your comforts, all the things that you love. You won't listen. You know, sometimes we are uh, uh, short of hearing when we are just too comfortable. Verse 34, behold, we lay a tool, we lay a tool here. And on the morrow it is gone. And behold, our swords are taken from us in the day. We have sought them for battle. Verse 35, Yea, we have hid up our treasures. And they have slipped away from us because of the curse of the land. Verse 36, Oh, that we had repented in the day that the Lord, that the word of the Lord came unto us. For behold, the land is cursed, and all things have become slippery, and we cannot hold them. Verse 37, That is such a great way of writing that eh? just beautiful words they're slippery they have all all things have become slippery and we cannot hold them that is so true you know the lord giveth and the lord taketh away remember that i always remember that God. you know just remember those things won't last forever um okay 37 behold we are surrounded by dem by demons Yea, we are encircled about by the angels of him who have sought to destroy our souls. Behold, our iniquities are great. O Lord, canst thou turn away thine anger from us, and this shall be your language in those days. This shall be your language in those days, the, the days that you get chastised, and the day that you remember. Um, I just want to talk a bit about the verse 37. Behold, we are surrounded by demons. And I think um, that is so true. You are surrounded by demons when you find yourself in weakness. You have demons that latch onto you that know your weaknesses and they kind of like provoke you. Their only job is to tempt you. That's their only job. So their only job is to tempt you and you know, we give in to it. We give in to the temptation. We give in to the little voices that say, oh, nah, don't listen to them. Or, you know, they tap you on the shoulder and say, oh, it's okay, what you're doing is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, you start to justify your own sin. Remember, the Lord giveth and he taketh away too. But, you know, the thing about being encircled 
uh, by those demons is they absolutely know everything about you. They know your imperfections, they know your weaknesses. They know how to bring you down in their own subtle way, because that, that is Satan's way. He brings you down in subtle ways until he grabs a hold of you, until you're close enough and he'll take you and drag you down. Okay, so behold, we are surrounded by demons, yea, we are encircled about by the angels of him, of him who had sought to destroy your, our souls. Behold, our iniquities are great. O Lord, canst thou turn away thine anger from us, and this shall be your language in those days. Verse 38, but behold, your days of probation are past. Ye have procrastinated the day of your salvation until it is everlastingly too late. And your destruction is made sure, yea, for you. Because we are, and this is not just people who have had in their heart. This is us who are, um, who have suffered in our hearts too. We we are not exempt from this. Um, procrastinated the day of your salvation until it is everlastingly too late, and your destruction is made sure, yea, for ye have sought all the days of your lives, for that ye should not obtain. And you sought for happiness in doing iniquity, which thing is contrary to the nature that righteousness which is in our great and eternal head. I just wanted to say something about that. It says you have procrastinated the day of your salvation. And I, uh, every day I, I hear people procrastinate, you know. We justify what we do. We make excuses. We... You know, I know we're not perfect, but oh, I just, it helps me see the, the Lord and his patience with us and his mercy with us. Because like yesterday we talked about where is he on that list of our priorities? Have we got him at the very top? Like is he part of our day at all? Is he somewhere in there in our busy day? <laughs> Just know the Lord is just very patient with us. Verse 9, O ye people of the land, that ye would hear my words, and I pray that the anger of the Lord be turned away from you, and that ye would repent and be saved. Okay. A lot of warnings in there. Mm. Um, and what came to your mind as I read or as you read, you know, what were the warnings that stood out for you? <sighs> okay, so uh, it says here, what inspired you about Helaman 13, 3 to 4? And that was my favorite part, actually, apart from the part uh, about the demons. What was your favorite part? Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, verse 3 and 4. So let's go back to it, okay? And if you want to discuss any verse, then just let me know, please. Okay, so let's go back to it. And he says, But behold, the voice of the Lord came unto me, that he should return again, and prophesy unto the people whatsoever things should come into his heart. So he's supposed to tell people what is in his heart. Like I said, that place is a, your heart is a place of truth. And I love what the Lord says here. And it came to pass that they would not suffer that he should enter into the city. Therefore he got up upon the wall thereof, and stretched forth his hand, and cried with a loud voice, and prophesied unto the people whatsoever things the Lord put in his heart. That line is gold right there. He prophesied unto the people whatsoever things the Lord put in his heart. And so the question says, what inspires you about these two verses and I think uh, I, I'd like to hear your answers what you think inspires you about verse 3 and 4 but for me I will share to me I think um, it is amazing how we can share things from our heart and that God will put things inside our heart the Lord will put the things inside our heart for us to share I absolutely understand that um, how has sharing from your heart helped you? That's the next question. How has sharing from your heart helped you? Have you ever taught lessons before and shared from your heart? How has that gone for you? 
Have you ever shared in class, in a class or a group of friends, um, something in your heart? And how was that for you? Have you ever shared your testimony and shared from the heart? How was that for you? Oh my gosh. It is one of the most beautiful things that I have ever seen is seeing people sharing from their heart. And you really see their true intentions of their heart when they speak. There's no lies. There's no fake and when you share from your heart. Never. And I love that Samuel trusted the Lord to put things in his heart. So he would say what the Lord wants him to say. These are not Samuel's words, they are the Lord's words. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, so part of application, it encourages us to um, to speak from the heart as a family. You know, that's, that's what it's saying. It's encouraging you to speak from your heart. And encourage others in your family to speak from their heart. Um, there's also another question where it tells us, uh, like, what a... This is from the manual. It's kind of like saying, well, Samuel was warning the Nephites um, of their wickedness and and telling them of their destruction. The other thing it says here in the manual is that, like, what are some of the warnings that the prophet has given us today? Now, what has he warned us of? Um, and are we taking heed of these warnings? One thing I, I know our prophet today talked about is um, our health. You know, when he said, take the, eat your vitamins, what he's saying is that we should do our, our best to prolong our lives because there is much to see in the gospel. It is going, going to change immensely and it already has in some way. But he's asking us to consider our own health, examine our own um, health uh, and try and do better. And I think when he, when he said these things, he's trying to protect us from the things that could hurt us as a result of poor health. You know, we need to be our best selves. And this is another way Satan can hurt us, is when our health is poor and we are not able to do things for ourselves. And he wants, so the prophet is warning us to strengthen ourselves. So I kind of like think it's, it, it, it makes us stronger when we are well balanced, spiritually, physically, mentally, you know, and everything else to be centered as you know, to just to be stronger, because I don't know. That's what he wants us to do, and it's gonna. I think in some way it's gonna help us these days. Like people are finding fighting mental health, um, depression, and anxiety, and so when our bodies are strong and functioning better, like when we're eating good food, and it helps our our bodies to work in a. Um, to be stronger, mate. <laughs> you know? That's, um, that's good warning. Good warning for us, yeah? Anyway, tell me any, any thoughts that you have on that, you know? What are the prophet's warnings that you are taking need of? Well, that health one is definitely one that I'm looking at. And I am trying very hard to, to improve my health. Um, yeah, the other part about the um, speaking from the heart, funny thing how we have these situations that help us learn more about these things um, with clarity. I had a situation this morning, I'll share with you. Um, my husband was a little upset this morning and I didn't know why. And I think in his heart, you know, things had grown in his heart that it like built up over a amount of time and maybe this had come from his childhood you know of how to deal with it so he gets a little bit upset in his heart and he keeps it to himself and I did explain this morning if there's anything troubling you please share it with me and you know sometimes people are not happy well not happy it's I mean they're not confident enough to share from their heart because maybe they think it's going to hurt someone or, or so forth so we had this little talk this morning about what's troubling him. <laughs> oh, 
anyway when you're trying to humble yourself when you humble yourself you can actually hear what it is in your heart and as he softened himself he shared things that were on his mind but from his heart and I think it was it was much easier for me to understand and as a result of that I humbled myself too and I shared things from my heart and we had a, just a beautiful experience of of teaching one another from the heart you can never find fault with someone who is speaking from their heart it is a place it is a, a genuine place you know there is no fake there is no lies it is all in honesty and sometimes I think and when we humble ourselves we allow ourselves to empty ourselves out so the Lord can fill it does that make sense to you make way for the Lord to fill your heart with beautiful things so you can share that and help one another yeah um, anyway um, you know the, the, the part that even said that there are demons surrounding these people is so true and it can happen to us too so you have to be aware of Satan even as Satan could try and penetrate the heart of my husband and and cause him to be upset which could have blown to something you know greater more sinister more evil whatever I watched TV yesterday and I saw that the um, the stats for domestic violence sexual violence you know all things that could ha that happen in the home those numbers have grown and why do you think that is because we're all at home a lot more often and some people are not going to work and they are at home so these are perfect um, situ perfect situations for, for Satan to come in and find your weakness and just niggle in there and work away at breaking your family and that's he's a master of deception and you think that you are strong enough to avoid these things but he is everywhere and he's a professional at what he does you know just be careful um, anyway um, so I've come to the end of the like what time did I start two o'clock it's not even three o'clock yet no I started quarter okay so it's nearly an hour okay so um, in closing please share any comments that you may have or anything that kind of like um, stood out to you you don't have to be a scholar to answer any questions or or talk of these things it can be just as simple as just talking about it and I think talking today is what will help us especially in these COVID times and and these uncertain times just talking to each other it's therapeutic it helps us and I don't think the Lord wanted us to be alone in some of these things so he 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 blessed us with having each other and that's why I created this page so we can talk to each other um, so yeah if you have anything to talk about then please come forward and let's share there's no perfect people here um, and anyone can share anything anyone um, in closing I'd like to bear you my testimony I know that these things that we have talked about are indeed true I am very grateful for the warnings that we have today I'm grateful that we have a choice to choose between right and wrong I'm grateful that we have a choice between um, you know I'm glad we have a choice can you imagine what our life would be like if we didn't have any choice can you imagine what our life would be like if, if we had to do all things in exactness can you imagine if we didn't have a choice on 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 you know just making any choice and we were made to do things I don't think that's that's cool oh Belanda <laughs> I guess I just finished <laughs> I just finished the live do you want to come on do you want me to bring you on <laughs> let me know let me know let me know I was just wrapping that up actually <laughs> But come on, if you want me, if you want, let's have a chat. Let's 
Mais il y a un ça. Oh, <laughs> you just come on, egg. Let me know if you want to come on because I just finished reading, but we can have some discussion about it. Let me know. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Did you actually get a chance to read it? Because I can read to you. You and I can do our own personal reading. You just tell me what you want. I can do a personal reading. Do you want to do a personal reading? Because I know you don't like replay. What do you think? Yes, I did. Oh, okay, you did this morning. Do you want me to bring you, bring you on so we can have a discussion? I don't know why my light keeps going off. You want me to bring it on so we can have a discussion about it? Or do you want to discuss any of the verses that you loved? Let me know. I don't know why my light always goes off. Just tell me. I can put the music up now because I finished the reading. But what do you want to discuss from that lesson? It's a great chapter. No thanks, I'm in bed. Oh, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. My husband told me to stay in bed, but I had no ears. I can't stay in bed. Um, so I had a headache yesterday, and I've still got the headache today. Um, and the weather is yuck. Hey, the weather's yuck today, and it's cold. Um, it's a great chapter. It is a great chapter. Lots of warnings everywhere. Um, yeah, it's beautiful good reminder for us. My favorite parts was um, verse 3 and 4 where it talks about speaking from your heart. You know, that stood out to me. That was beautiful. Um, and how we should speak from your heart. Really? To speak from the heart. It's beautiful, beautiful. Um, I missed yet again. My inspection is today, so I'm resting. Oh, so are you waiting for the inspection to happen? So I'm resting. Oh, okay. Um, well, you know what? Tomorrow's live. Can you choose the time? And we'll come on at that time. Okay? You just let me know. You're a champion, not me. I'm no champion. It's done. It, it is done. Um, you can go in and re do, uh, watch the replay or you can... I will do a, a personal reading with you. It's up to you. Um, and anyone watching too, gosh, don't don't think I I won't do personal readings. I will do personal readings. If you want to do a one on one reading with me, you know, off off the live, you know, then just let me know. No problem. And I do appreciate that that people are watching and in their own time, I know. You know, I just appreciate everybody's effort. Um, anything else we need to talk about, Linda? Anything else you want to talk about? I'm happy to discuss it. What moved you in that chapter? Now, my verses were three and four. Those are my favorites. Because I love talking from my heart. And that demons one too, that part two, because I, I absolutely see that. I know that's real. I know it's real. You don't believe in demons? Wow. Sorry about it. It's in our chapter today. Yeah. Anyway, but if if you're gonna say something, then come forward and say it. If not, then I'll wrap it up. Um. And I'll let you get back to your busy day in bed. <laughs> Anyway, nothing else to say? 
YouTube. I'm no champion, mate. I'm just, I just, I, okay, yes, I will. I'll watch the replay and make my comments. Sounds great. Um, one more thing I was going to say. No, I think I've forgotten it. Uh, will you speak from the heart? Something about speaking from the heart. Oh, what was it? Oh, I'll think about it later. Oh, it'll probably come to me later. Um, yeah, it'll probably come to me later. Anyway, I'll wrap it up and I'll just share my testimony. Thank you, Black. You didn't miss it. You made it. Before I finish, you made it. Thank you for coming in. Um, those who came in to say hello, um, I appreciate your your time. And I'll close with my testimony that I know that God lives, that I know that our Savior atoned for our sins, and I'm forever grateful for him doing that. Um, and I know that we have a living prophet today. I know that his name is Pres President Russell M. Nelson. I know that we have, um, oh, what else do I know? I know that this gospel is beautiful. That's what I know. And I'm very grateful for it in my life. And I bear witness that all these things are true. And I love you all. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I say our prayer. Ready for a prayer? Gosh, I just really want to be in the bed too. Far out. It's so cold. Yuck. But I'm not. I'm going to go clean my house. I should be onto it like you, Belinda. Have an amazing house already. Cleaned out. Um, yeah, I've got a little bit of work to do. And then maybe I'll watch a movie. It's going on to quarter to three now, um, our Perth time. Thank you for joining us. Come again tomorrow, and God bless you all. I'll say the prayer. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank thee for this wonderful time that we've had together. We thank thee for the spirit that has been here with us. We're grateful for the things that we have learned, and help us to ponder them, and and we're grateful, Father, for the um, for being inspired by the Spirit. And we're grateful, Father, for all our blessings, and just grateful for all these things. And we say these things humbly in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I know you don't like watching the replays, Belinda. But have fun doing them. It's actually a good thing to do. I watch it when I go to bed and I'm not disappointed, man. I tell you, it's just a great way to relax listening to it, eh? A great way to chill and to, I don't know, ponder the spirits. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Anyway, you go and enjoy yourself. Um, love you. Love to all. We'll see you later. And, um, yeah, we'll see you later. See you tomorrow. Bye.